All right, change makers. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there, you guys, and you know, seeing it out to the end. I appreciate your presence here and your good cheer. Failure. Financial collapse. Heartbreak, disease, death, trauma, stigma. Have any of these lovely pleasantries come knocking on your door? <laughs> of course they have, because we all go through hard times. As they say, that's life. As a adult, standing three feet, eight inches tall, as you might imagine, I've had my fair share of difficult times, hard times. As a kid, there was lots of teasing and calling nasty names. As a teenager, I was excluded from the thrills of romance and dating. Many failed romantic relationships. And then, just a month before my graduation from photography college, the dean invited me to his office just to tell me that nobody was going to hire me because I was a little person. Challenges are no stranger to me. At about 35, I thought I had it all handled. Well, I'll just do what everybody else does. I'll act strong and pretend like there's nothing painful happening. That'll do it. At that time in my life, I was living in Kona, Hawaii. <laughs> I lived there with a bunch of my college friends on a beautiful fruit and flower farm. Paradise, right? On the outside, certainly. But on the inside, something very different was happening. In the morning when I'd wake up, instead of running out and picking papayas and avocados and running to the beach and watching guys surf, I woke up with gushing tears, thinking about how I might end my life. Maybe a bottle of pills. Maybe. I'll just drive off the mountain ride. Maybe I'll just put a shot in the old noggin. Now, I didn't pray back then, but one night I found myself saying, OK, God, let's have it out. Either let me die or give me some help. Get me out of this hell hole, please. And as we would know what happened, because I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Help came in the form of a friend who was carrying a book called The Diamond Approach. I followed him to a workshop that weekend and found out I had amazing non-three-dimensional experiences that weekend and not on drugs. We, I was inspired to move to Boulder, Colorado to be more engaged in that school. I learned so many things there. I wish I could share with you, but the, the most important one was that if I followed my next step, if I looked at was what was most, if I followed my next step and dealt with the difficulty in front of me, that what was most needed would arise inside of me. Just take that next step, just like I don't know if I can do this in high heels. When I was climbing up that pole at Polly, and I was struggling to get the next line so I could pull myself up, so I could take that next step. A few years into the school, I was invited to take my next step, to enter an intensive called the Fisher-Hoffman process, to process a lot of the difficult experiences as a kid. One night, I came into the class. There was a stack of pillows and a long bat sitting in front of my seat. Take my next step. I was invited and given permission to let out all my angry, pent-up anger, frustration, all of that. Well, I thought it was kind of weird, but it was 
was like so incredibly liberating to just go berserk on those pillows. <laughs> anyway, after about three rounds of 45 minutes, my breath was like this, and I lay back on my pillows to rest. And when I closed my eyes, I saw something that changed my life. It was a diamond. Now, this was no diamond in the rough. This diamond was sheer refined perfection, beyond Tiffany's, beyond royalty, bigger than my entire body, filling me from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. Shimmering prism of light streamed out in every direction, and every facet glistened in rainbow colors. Words rose up inside of me from the silence. I am a diamond. Beautiful, precious, beautiful, valuable. In that moment, I, know, I knew I was no longer not enough. I knew I was no longer defined by the opinions of others. I was now the authority on my worth because I knew who I really was. Woohoo! <laughs> summer, I went to a Little People of America's National Conference. And I met a really cute guy who had long, luscious brown hair and eyelashes that touched the sky. Now, the bad news is the convention week was nearly half over, so I knew I had to work fast. So <laughs> I put him through Peggy's instant attitude test. In our first conversation, I said, well, why are you a little person? What? Well, why are you a little person? Before I was born, God gave me a choice. He said I could be tall or I could have great hair. <laughs> a green light, green light. <laughs> Over a year later, we were married and oh, happy day. I was thrilled to be embraced by feeling someone truly loved me. It was an amazing time in my life. And as life would have it, challenges happen. About 15 years into the relationship, the challenges intensified. And two years later, I asked him for a divorce. I remember standing in front of my house, watching the orange thing on the side of the U-Haul bus um, truck go down the drive, down the hill, and around the corner, and disappear. I never saw Brad again. That was over five years ago. When that U-Haul disappeared, something huge happened. That big hairy monster that was under my bed, it popped out like Jack in the Box. If I'm alone, I'll die. If I'm alone, I'll die. That resounding mantra haunted me morning, noon, and night. Inside, I trembled like a leaf on a tree. I knew it was time to take my next best step. Over the next couple of years, I watched myself struggle and strife. I latched on to inappropriate relationships, just trying to keep my head above water. I dropped out of my business, and I retreated to a small town called Ojai, where it was safe. Now, it wasn't just my body that was small. My life was small. And I was very, very small. The good news is, I've always believed that happiness is my birthright. So I bantered that bad mantra <laughs> with the four most powerful words in the English language with you all know, I can do it. <laughs> I remind
reminded myself several times a day, I can do it. I can be happy. I can get through this if I just follow that next step. And over the last few years, there's been a lot of grappling with difficult emotions and also watching the magic that arises as I take that next step and work through them. There's been lots of anger and rage. And when I let myself just have it the pillows or just sit there and feel it, amazingly, strength and courage rise up inside of me. Now, that's a real resource that I could use in my life, especially at that point. Some days it would be grappling with the hurt that reached back to my birth. And when I did, and I sat there and cried a thousand tears and shook and trembled, magically, a green cloud of compassion would rise within me and surround me and connect me with essential compassion, my own true nature. And sometimes, I'd go to that terror, and I'd see and feel myself falling through endless space, screaming in terror, there's no bottom. And when I tolerated it, amazingly, magically, like a rabbit out of a hat, a pink cloud of loving kindness would wrap itself around me and embrace me. I knew I wasn't alone anymore. I wasn't separate. So I may have stopped growing at a young age on the outside. But on the inside, it seems like there's no end. There's no end to the challenges that come to us. And there's no end to the magnificence and magic of our being if we just take that next step. There's no end to our fullest potential. Through these difficult past few years, what I've really learned is the challenges are holy fertilizer. <laughs> A little bit shitty at first, but <laughs> if we stay the course, they help us learn, grow, and evolve. And then we become more, more of our true self, more capable, more confident, more loving, kinder, more open-hearted, and more open-minded, and on and on. So, my friends, my change maker beloveds, the next time you see and you hear the knock of trouble at your door, failure, financial collapse, trauma, stigma, loss, death, whatever it is, remember, challenges are the fertilizer. They're a gift and the key to your transformation. I invite you to follow that challenge and take your next best step. <laughs>